Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in an underground passage deep beneath Saturn City, attempting to capture a plutonium thief, Victor Drumlin. Drumlin has reversed the atmosphere pumps and is drawing deadly methane gas from Saturn's atmosphere into the lower levels. Protected by a shielded hideout, Drumlin refuses to surrender. That methane gas isn't going to stop us, Drumlin. We can break that door down before it reaches this level. That door is built to shield against an explosion, Corey. The kind you're going to hear in a moment. What does he mean, Commander? He's bluffing, Happy. Methane isn't explosive. It is. And mixed with ordinary air and ignited. Listen. What's that, Commander? Turn on the generators, Happy. If he overloads them, he'll ignite the gas and blow up Saturn City. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Secret of Sub-Level 7. Say, gang, how are you at imitations? Well, this is Captain Dick Tufel speaking, and here's my idea of how a cosmic surface car sounds with just ordinary fuel in its tank. Vroom! But, 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 but. <laughs> now here's that same car with super fuel in its tank. Vroom! <laughs> yes, sir, that cosmic surface car is really roaring now. Because it's supercharged with super fuel. And gang, the same is true with you. What happens when you have ordinary fuel for breakfast? Well, you move like this. What, 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 what? That's right, you're just a putt putt. But when you fill up your tank with super fuel, man, you're supercharged. So eat a power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks and get supercharged. Flavor galore in every bite sized biscuit. So get the super cereals today, rice checks, wheat checks. And remember, inside of each package, you get a mysterious magic space picture. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, the secret of sub-level seven. All day long, huge crowds have thronged United Planets Park on the man-made planet Terra. All the leading scientists from Mercury to Pluto have been demonstrating improvements in spaceship equipment, in surface cars, also in such home appliances as the Diatronic Chef, which will prepare any one of a thousand different dinners in 30 seconds, merely by dialing a number. Cadet Happy has been a fascinated spectator at most of these exhibits, but now he's returned to Commander Corey's office at Space Patrol Headquarters. Commander. Well, Happy, I didn't expect you back for another hour. I thought I'd better give you this note, sir. It's marked urgent. Well, who gave it to you? That's the odd part of it, sir. I don't know. Somebody in the crowd slipped it in my belt somewhere in the Hall of Science. Evidently, someone doesn't have much confidence in our official message service. It might be a joke of some kind, Commander. Uh, one of the new cadets testing me to see what I'd do. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought this to me, Happy. Is it important, sir? If it isn't someone's idea of a practical joke, it's very important. Listen to this. Nine months ago, a quarter of a million credits worth of plutonium was stolen from reactor plant number five on Jupiter's third moon. If you want to know who was behind that theft, come to apartment 15J, Einstein Terrace at 1300 hours, Universal Star Time today. You can rock it. But what's the signature, sir? There's no signature. Well, they're not taking any chance of being caught. That must be somebody's idea of a funny joke. Except that the theft of plutonium wasn't made public, and they're still looking for the thieves. Happy, go to the electro directory and see who lives at 15J Einstein Terrace. Yes, sir. You'll find Einstein Terrace in City Zone 5. I've got it, Commander. And now the address, 15J. Uh, the indicator panel says Vogel, Edmund R., occupational code number 3-146.28. Happy, it's 12.22 now. We'll have time to make a quick check on him in the files before we... This is a pretty fancy neighborhood for a production analyst. They must get pretty good pay. Yeah, it depends on how good they are, Happy. Yes? I'm looking for Edmund Vogel. I am Edmund Vogel. What can I do for you? 
I'm Commander Corey of the Space Patrol. Cadet Happy here gave me a message. A message? Perhaps we'd better talk inside, Mr. Bolton. Why, yes, of course. Come in, gentlemen. What's this about a message, Commander? Were you at the Hall of Science in the United Planets Park at any time today? Oh, I know. I had intended to go, but some urgent business came up. Mr. Vogel, see this envelope? Yes. Did you write that address or order anyone else to write it? No, I don't know a thing about it. What makes you think I do? The message inside asked me to come here at 1300 Universal Star Time. Yeah. But what about if you don't already know and you have no reason for contacting me, then we just consider the incident closed. Sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Bolton. Oh, that's quite all right, Commander. Uh, here, I'll open the door. Oh, one more thing, Mr. Bolton. Yes? Do you know of anyone who goes in for practical jokes of this kind? Oh, no, Commander. I, I'm afraid my friends and acquaintances are. Well, you might consider them a little on the dull side. Do you know anyone who has a grudge against you? No, Commander. I'm completely mystified by the whole affair. All right, Mr. Bogle. Thanks for your cooperation. Let's go, Happy. Goodbye, Commander. Well, they're gone, Mr. Drumlin. I know. I heard the whole thing. Didn't you think I handled it very well? Yes, but you could have handled it better, Vogel, if you hadn't written that note in the first place. But I explained it to you. I needed the reward money. You haven't given me what you promised. I couldn't even find you. I got your message all right, but I couldn't risk answering them. However, I had my men watching you just in case you tried informing the space patrol, which was a lucky hunch on my part. I've told you I was sorry. But now that you've promised me my money and I've denied writing that note, everything's all right again, isn't it, Mr. Drummond? Yes. As long as you watch your step. I will. I promise. I'll give you the money right now. But remember this. I couldn't have taken the plutonium without the help of the information I got from you. But at the time, I didn't know why you wanted it. Yes. I'll try to make Corey believe that. Here's your money. Thank you. Thank you very much. And don't forget this definitely makes you a party to the crime. Think that over the next time you feel like sneaking notes to one of Corey's men. It, it won't happen again. I'm sure it won't, Vogel. In fact, I'm... Here are those handwriting blow-ups, Commander. Good. Major Robertson certainly rushed them, too. Well, this is just a preliminary check, sir. The Major says an expert is working out the detailed analysis. Well, let's see what we've got here, Hunter. Well, uh, this is a blow-up of the note, and this is a magnet photo of Vogel's own handwriting. And these are notations he made while working on charts and reports for his company. Hmm. They seem to correspond pretty well with the letters and figures in the note you found in the guy. Well, Major Robertson says there are at least six similarity characteristics. That's pretty conclusive, Happy. I'd say that Vogel wrote the note, all right. But why would he deny it? Perhaps something happened to change his mind. Well, how do we find out for sure, sir? We'll wait for the experts to finish the analysis? There's a quicker way. We'll bring Vogel here for a brainograph test. Let's go back. He doesn't seem to be home, sir. I'll try the door. Lock. We'll use the magma key and have a look around. Looks of things, I'd say we're a little late. You mean someone else had the idea of searching Vogel's place for evidence? No, oh, Happy. It looks like Vogel suddenly decided to leave and pack in a great hurry. These clothes lying around are freshly pressed and laundered. They don't look as though they've been pawed through by anyone searching for something. Yes, sir, that's right. This whole place has the air of a man who suddenly decided to run away. And in the confusion, had a hard time deciding what to take with him. He certainly must have decided to travel light. Happy, look around, see if you can find any letters or spacegrams. All right, Commander. Well, uh, here's an example of Vogel's writing. You're in a notepad by the space of them. They're just figures. Maybe they'll match the figures in the note. I'll take them along. Let's see. They were written in a hurry. One line has been crossed out. Maybe. That's some way of knowing what these numbers mean. Here, take a look at them, huh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
59-1400, that's crossed out, and 63-1430. What do they suggest to you? Well, how about the time? 1400 and 1430 could be universal start time. Yes, it could. It's after 1400 now. Yeah, but 59 and 63, I draw a blank on those. Well, we'll maybe planning to leave Terra. Space Control Special Information Section, Commander Corey calling. Yes, Commander. Graves here. Lieutenant, are any space flights scheduled to blast off from Terra at 1400 and 1430 Universal Star Time today? I'll check with operations immediately. I want all flights, commercial and private, and their destinations. This is top priority. Be with you in a minute. I'll hang on. Happy. While we're waiting, keep searching this apartment. Somebody's at the door, sir. I'll see who it is and bring them in here. I don't want anyone to tip off Vogel that we're after him. Yes, sir. Vogel, I... Oh, sorry. I must be in the wrong apartment. Will you step in, please? Look, obviously I have made a mistake. Sorry to have bothered you. My orders are to bring you to Commander Corey. What's this all about? You'll save yourself a lot of trouble if you just come in. How well, about... Well, sure. Anything to oblige. Commander's right in here. Commander, I think I'm entitled to an explanation. Are you here to see Vogel? Vogel, why... He what? mentioned Vogel's name when I opened the door, sir. Yes, I came to see Vogel. Where is he? That's what I want to know. Did you have an appointment with him? No, not exactly. I talked to him about doing a production survey for me. And I thought I'd drop in and clear up a few questions that have been bothering me. Who are you? Uh, my name is Drumlin, Victor Drumlin. I represent a firm that has a new hard metals extrusion project. Vogel was recommended to me by an acquaintance. I scarcely know the man. When did you see Vogel last, Mr. Drummond? Mm, let me see. It was two days ago. We had lunch together. Did he seem worried about anything? Anxious? Nervous? Not that I noticed. I hope nothing is wrong. Information section to Commander Corey. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Drummond. Hey, all right, Commander. Corey here. Go ahead, Lieutenant. I have the information on blast off time, sir. Flight 59, blast off for Venus, 1400. Flight 82, blast off for Earth, 1421. Flight 63 for Jupiter, 1430. Nothing more until 155. Thanks, Lieutenant. Hurry out. Well, happy. It looks as though Vogel was interested in that 1430 ship for Jupiter, Flight 63. 1415 now, sir. We're not trying to pick him up. Mr. Drumlin, oh, I'm... Oh, oh. Mr. Drumlin, what's the matter? Get a doctor. Catch him, happy. <laughs> I've got him, sir. Oh. Let's put him here on the couch. Oh. Easy now. Yeah. You're going to be all right, Mr. Drummond. Just take it easy. Here, I'll loosen your collar. I'm sorry to be such a nuisance. Oh, that's all right. Uh, thanks, Cadet. Commander, he's got my ray gun. Drummond, what's the idea? I'll show you, Corey. Turn around, both of you. Do what he says. Uh, now. Uh, uh, oh. I just have time to get to the spaceport and stop Mogul. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, ever hear the story of the boy who heard music every time he ate something that tasted real good? A piece of cake, and he'd hear drums. A dish of ice cream, and he'd hear this. And when he tried rice checks and wheat checks, the super cereals, he'd not only hear drums, And the piano. He heard the whole band. And no wonder that boy heard a whole band. Checks are terrific. Rice checks is crisp shredded rice in that modern bite-sized design. And wheat checks, wheat checks is golden shredded whole wheat in that same wonderful easy-to-eat bite-sized design. And hey, each one of those bite-sized biscuits is loaded with zing and zip. A good breakfast with checks and <coughs> you're supercharged. So get those swell-tasting super cereals that help to supercharge you. Rice checks, wheat checks. And remember, inside the package, there's a mysterious magic space picture. <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Secret of Sub-Level 7. Buzz and Happy have been knocked unconscious by Victor Drumlin to prevent them from finding Edmund Vogel and discovering that Drumlin is the mastermind behind the unsolved death 
of a large amount of plutonium from a reactor plant on Jupiter's third moon. Leaving Buzz and Happy in Vogel's apartment on Terra, Drumlin has raced to the Terra spaceport to keep Vogel from boarding a Jupiter-bound spaceship. Calmly, casually, Drumlin scans the crowded terminal, then approaches a nervous-looking man pacing near a row of public communications booths. Going away, Vogel? Mr. Drummond, I hope you're not planning on taking the 1430 ship to Jupiter. How'd you know that? From Commander Corey. And if I hadn't interfered, he would be here now instead of me. What have you done? What have you got me? Now, now, take it easy. I'm here to help you. We'll blast off right away in my private cruiser. No, no, leave me alone. I don't want any more of this. Here. Here, I'll give you back your money. I don't care about the money. Your behavior is attracting attention. Here, let me give you something to quiet your nerves. Don't be alarmed. It's just an electro-injector treatment. Just step inside this communication booth until it takes it back. Mr. Dunn, please. I don't want to go with you. Inside this boat. There are comfortable seats for a boat ah. Now, so sit down. That's it. Ah. Now, we'll just sit here pleasantly as though we were phoning a mutual friend. Of course, in a moment, when the electro-injector takes effect, you won't be able to talk, much less raise an alarm. And Listen to me. However, you will be able to walk where I guide you. Keep your hands away from the control switches. If I hear the operator's voice, I'm afraid I'll have to finish this interview rather unpleasantly. Let me, let me alone, John. I can't leave you here to spill all you know to Corey. But you'll be safe with me in sub-level 7, sub don't try to talk. We have nothing to worry about. Corey will never find either of us in sub-level 7. That's the old underground section of Saturn City that was sealed off years ago when the new levels were finished under the eastern end of the city. That's where I've been hiding out all these months. All right. Let's go. Stand up. That's it. We go to my ship, and if anyone asks any questions... I'll merely say that I'm a doctor, and you're my patient, and we're going to know. Happy. Happy. What happened? Our pal Drumlin knocked us out. Mm-hmm. Head feels like a meteor hit it. We'll exchange symptoms later. But look at the time. It's 14.55. You're too late to stop Vogel. Let's hope Drummond is too late to warn him. I'll call Space Control to hold Flight 63 when it lands at Jupiter City, and we'll get over to headquarters and see what we can find out about that. This isn't very much farther, Vogel. It's so cold and dark down here. When the passageway turns, we can turn on the lights. Then it's just a few yards further to my living quarters. You'll find them quite comfortable. I don't like it down here. It's like being shut up in a tomb. No one will think of looking for us here. We'll have light and heat and plenty of food. All the convenience of city life, but none of the congestion. How long will we have to stay in sub-level seven? Oh, when you get used to it, it's pleasant. It's as pleasant as living on the surface of a planet. The old atmosphere plant and power plant are still in working order. The city could use them in an emergency. Now... Happy, has anything come in about Vogel while I've been out? Not a thing, sir. Except that he definitely wasn't on the ship to Jupiter. And I haven't been able to locate much information about this Drumlin either, sir. Drumlin must have been in on this plutonium theft with Vogel. Well, maybe Drumlin's the brains behind all this. If he is, he won't hesitate to remove weaklings like Vogel if they threaten his safety. Here, Happy, put this on the microtape playback. Yes, sir. What is it, sir? It's a reel of tape from Spaceport Communications. Oh? Public booth number 23 from the delayed transmission circuit. Uh... Delayed transmission, sir? It's a new service for civilian space travelers, Happy. You wouldn't come in contact with it ordinarily, since our personnel use official facilities. But in the public booth, there's a special switch that turns on a tape recording device. Uh-huh. You give your name, and the name and location of the person you want to talk to, and give the message, and then the communications operator transmit the message at a later time. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, uh, like, like if a man, uh, man has to make a space trip in a hurry, and his wife isn't home, he goes into a booth, uh, presses a switch, and says... Myrtle, this is Joe. You weren't home when I called. Had to go to Venus on business. Be back Friday. Now, that's <laughs> the idea. This particular tape you're queuing up caused a problem. 
There was no information indicating where it was to be relayed, but luckily the operator checking the tape recognized a couple of names. All right, turn on the paper. Yes, sir. What mail? Don't try to talk. You have nothing to worry about. Corey will never find either of us in Dublin 7. It gets the old underground section of Saturn City. It was sealed off years ago when new levels were finished under the eastern end of the city. That's where I've been hiding out all these months. All right, Bobo. Let's go. Stand up. That's the end of it, sir. It's Bogle and Drummond, all right. But how come their voices are on a delayed transmission tape? They must have gone into a booth for the sake of privacy. By the tone of Vogel's voice, he wasn't too happy about it. No. Either one of them accidentally kicked the switch that turned on the recorder, or Vogel managed to kick it on without attracting Drummond's attention. Then they're in Saturn City. Down in the seventh level. Well, we can space it from Saturn City and have them surrounded in no time. Yes, if we didn't care about what happened to Vogel. Huh? Drummond wouldn't hesitate to get rid of Vogel if he thought he could escape by himself. Drumlin probably knows that ancient underground section of Saturn City better than anyone. Oh, you're right, sir. Well, what do we do? We'll blast off to Saturn City and contact the city engineer. We'll get maps of the old underground region. Then you and I will go down there and... Mr. Drumlin. Yes, ma'am. How long are you going to stay in this office, please? I've asked you a hundred times. I know you have, and I'm getting thick on it. Shut up. Then tell me. All right. I will. If you had any sense of gratitude, or any sense for that matter, you know I brought you here to spare your life. Space patrol wouldn't destroy me. No. But I, if I knew the space patrol had a chance of capturing me. Mr. Drummond, why? You're a wickling Vogel. You'd tell everything you know about me if Corey pointed a finger at you. But I didn't. How about yesterday in my apartment? Yeah, you got rid of Corey for a while. Because you knew I was in the next room, ready to bless Oh, Corey and you have to spill the thing. But you didn't have the brains to deceive Corey completely. But I can't spend the rest of my life cooped up in this sub-level seven. I'm tired of listening to your whining, Vogel. I understand this. You live in sub-level seven or not at all. On the surface of any planet, Corey could find you. I'd be finished. So make up your mind to live here or not at all. There must be some other solution, Mr. Drummond. I'll go crazy down here. I'm used to using my mind, figuring, planning. Down here, there's nothing to think about. Shut up! Warning, the system has picked them up. Somebody's here in the sub-level center. They must be coming after Would you keep quiet? It can't be more than two or three of them. I think we just need a team inspection by a couple of engineers. I'll turn out the lights so they won't suspect we're in here. Now, keep Getting close to me. Yes, according to the chief engineer, the most likely place for Vogel and Drummond to hide out is the old engineering living room. It's right around this next turn. What do we do? Rush them? Maybe our best bet. Draw your ray gun. Ready, sir? Yeah. The door to the living quarters is just a few yards around the corner. Let's get them. All right, Corey. Hold it. Hold it right where you are. Better go back the way you came, Corey. You can get us. Go on. Get going. Drummond. Can you hear us? You bet we can hear you. Then listen. All the entrances to the upper levels are guarded. You're trapped. <laughs> if you don't believe me, just try to escape. Yes, I know ways out of this sub-level region that the engineers don't know about. You're the one who's trapped. Listen. Do you hear that, Corey? Yes. Those are the old atmosphere pumps. Right now, they're pumping raw ammonia and methane into the lower levels. And separating the methane. Cut them off, Drumlin. I'm coming through that door. I wouldn't try it. The door is built to shield against an explosion. The kind you're going to hear in a moment. What does he mean, Commander? He's bluffing, Happy. Methane isn't explosive. Neither is ammonia. Not by themselves. You couldn't explode raw Saturn atmosphere. But, Commander, I'm pouring pure methane into the lower levels. And I'm going to explode that methane. I'm going to ignite it. Even if you could, you wouldn't be such a fool. You'd blast all these lower levels apart. That's right. And I can do it. Listen. Hear that, Corey? Drummond, what are you doing? Those are the old generators. I can overload them. Somewhere in the lower levels, something will blow out. The 
course, we'll ignite them in the thing. Drummond, listen to me. You'll blow yourself up. No, I won't. You and the cadet will get it first. Then the explosion will spread through the lower levels. There'll be panic up above. On the surface, and I can escape. Who's going to worry about capturing me and Bogle when the whole city is exploding on the ground? Turn off those generators! Commander, the commander is blowing up. Unless we turn those generators off, you'll blow up the entire city. That was the tenth up level. It's only a matter of seconds. Come on, Happy. Let's charge that door. <coughs> What's more, Happy? I'm increasing the power, Corey. With all your weight now, Happy? Yes, sir. Sir. <coughs> They've broken in. Run for it, Vogel. I'll get run on the hat. You turn off the generator. Yes, sir. You're too late, Corey. Nothing you can do. That is. Yeah. Need some help, Happy? No, I found the switches, sir. There. Well, that doesn't matter. The danger's over. I'll handle Drumlin. You hold Vogel. Yes, Commander. Commander, this man Drumlin threatened my life. He forced me into the whole thing. He stole the platoon. Yes, yes, Vogel. When we get back to Terra, you can write us another note. And this time, Vogel, do us a favor, will you? Sign your name. An exciting preview of next week's Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. This is Cadet Happy Gang. I just saw a top priority bulletin from communications. You know what it said? It said there isn't much more time to get a projectoscope because the offer soon ends. Jump in Jupiter, you just can't be without a projectoscope. Why, why it's terrific. It's shaped like a rocket ship, the commander's rocket ship, and it's six inches long. And it's made of plastic, and it's blue and yellow, and it's got four big tail fins and a radar antenna. And gosh, I'm running out of breath because the projectoscope is just so wonderful, I can't tell you about it fast enough. You better take over, Captain Tufel. I'm grounded. <laughs> well, gang, while half catches his breath, let me tell you about all the fun you can have with your projectoscope. First, you can show pictures on the wall with it comes with film containing four Space Patrol adventures, 24 pictures in all. Put this film in your projectoscope, black in the room, push the radar antenna, and a picture flashes on the wall. To show a whole adventure, slide the film from picture to picture. It's a swell signal light, too. It flashes on and off, quick as a wink. Also, it throws a steady beam of light, so you can also use it like a regular flashlight. Now, remember that bulletin half mentioned, this offer will soon end. So, gang, send for your official Space Patrol projectoscope today. Buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then, with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now, a preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in a private space cruiser heading toward Jupiter, when suddenly... It's a cosmic torpedo right off our port side. Well, who could be firing at us? I don't know, but he's within range. The next blast will get us sure. He hit us that time, sir. The power's gone. That's not all, Hap. The hull is punctured. We're losing all our air. Be sure to listen next Saturday for the exciting story, Treachery in Outer Space, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! Special bulletin for boys and girls in Dayton and Columbus, Ohio, and Baltimore, Maryland. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket! Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer and Bella Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station.